No, you're good. Hi, um, welcome. We want to welcome you today to another episode of Burning the Midnight Oil. This is a series that we've been working on about the parable of the ten virgins. So, um, if you've just joined on, we believe it is not a mistake that you are here today to hear a very special message. And um, honey, I just want to welcome you to uh, say a prayer. Sure, happy to do that. Thank you everybody for joining us. Be sure to Hit the like button and the subscribe button so you can keep up with us as we're going to continue to bring art that inspires life in the kingdom to you on a regular basis. And we appreciate you coming alongside of us. And today's prayer opens like this. Today, if you hear the Lord, harden not your heart. Through this invitation, we allow Jesus to open and improve our ability to hear and see what he wants to bless us with. We need to be aware of his voice, his thoughts, as compared to our own voice and what the world is suggesting to us, which many times is diametrically opposed to what the Lord's trying to bless us with. So we just ask for you to ask the Lord to open up the eye gate and the hearing gate and take on some kingdom perspectives that we'll be sharing with you today. Thank you. Yes, and um, so yes, just welcome to this time. We welcome you here and uh, here we want to, we would like to talk a little bit about um, relationship to this this painting that this is a, a midnight hour painting this is in the dark of night this you can see the the street lamps are lit um there's a stillness there's sort of a um i don't know there's just a this painting is a little surreal it's got a bit of a, a, a there's a quietness there's a, a stillness in the land there's a um, we just know that the, it's sort of is a it's creating a an atmosphere that the hour is near that the Lord is is near to returning and he's he's coming back and he's he's even just using vessels like us to just share share his love message um, to the world and he's he's knocking on the doors of people's hearts and and this is a this is all about a a real love message of how God works and ways to reveal his his love um, to the world and in this painting um, we see um, there's a building and it's sort of like an example of that God doesn't live just in a building he wanted to come and live in people um, in our hearts he wants to we are his temples we become the living temple that he gets to occupy um, but it's an invitation. He doesn't force his way in. He's 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 hoping and praying that we would desire, we'd we'd want him, we'd need him. That we know that life has become too hard, and we, in, in many different ways, that we have a need to have that the love, the the true love of God filling us, supplying us with His strength, His love. Um, so that we can endure and we can go on in this life because it's a lot. And we get to that place in life where the burdens of life can seem so heavy and tiring. And um, we know that Jesus, he's our example. And he, he models in the scriptures the way of how to walk out life, you know, not rendering evil for evil, but actually love. He overcomes evil. It's like love covers a multitude of sins. He went around doing good. Um, that's how he overcame evil was by doing good and 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 caring for people and and healing people. And so this interior life of it's an invitation that God wants to live in us. So we wanna we wanna be close with God. It's this. this there's a sense of. Um, 
and if you look into this window inside the building, it's just a representational of the interior life that we have as believers. And, and how do we enter into that interior life where we've invited the Lord into our hearts? He's, God lives in us that says the kingdom of heaven is within us. And it's not outside, it's in us. And that in this secret place of our hearts, in the innermost part of our being, is a place of love. It's the bridal chamber. It's, this, it's, the, it's the holy of holies. We can go into the deep, deep places of ourselves where the Lord wants to heal us from past wounds and, and restore us. And he wants, to, in that place of abiding in us, we abide in him. There's a true abiding of, of oneness, that we come into oneness with God's love. And it's not out there. We don't have to buy it. It's, it's, it's all in us. It's a precious gift that lives in us. And then it never leaves. It's Once it's in, once you've invited God into your heart, he will never, ever leave you or forsake you. It's, it's sealed by the Holy Spirit. It's a promise from God. Yeah, and, this is one of the things that Jesus models for us when he breaks away from even his inner circle of disciples. Yeah. To go mm -hmm. off and be with his father. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're encouraging everyone to do. Mm -hmm. Is to take time. Yeah. And this is one of the ways that we use this metaphor of the oil. To replenish the oil. Mm -hmm. Because um, life and the current state of affairs. Is yeah. it's draining. It's yes. worrisome. Yes. And there's. Things that are being done that we haven't seen before, atrocities mm. that really yeah. can put the worry right in you and, and can steal the joy right out of you. Yeah. So, and it's, things were pretty difficult back in Jesus' day, and he's also been alongside all the followers that met with just torturous ends. And they drew on a strength because of their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And they knew how to access that and they knew that that would never be taken from them so this is one of the ways that we replenish the oil in our lamps and everybody in the parable is exhausted the bridegroom is late mm -hmm. and i think it's a good commentary on the situation we find ourselves in here especially with the news is coming out and changes every day seemingly for the for the darker out of the Middle East and around Israel. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are we are in the last days where it says men's hearts will fail them. It's 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 gotten really bad. There's some horrible things that are happening, and we we've all just come out of the COVID pandemic. That was a huge global, um, you know, scary event that 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 put a lot of people in fear. We didn't know. You know where all this was leading us, where it was all going, and and um, there's just there's just so much going on right now that I think we just we just sense it. There's there's, there's been such a shift. There's been such a change. The world isn't going back to normal. It's there's it's it's changing, and it, it just seems it's the threat of World War Three is is at hand, and there's a lot of. Um, it's not just two countries. There's a lot of countries involved. There's a lot of, um, right, situations going exactly. on. Exactly, and we need to see ourselves as beacons of light because yeah. we've accessed this inner sanctuary of the Lord's that he strongly encourages us to have developed in our lives. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not going to come with a once-a-week church event this is a daily, mm -hmm. multiple times during the day when mm -hmm. you slip away, when you're waiting at the light for it to change, to touch base, to reconnect, and realize that when you do that, you strengthen your soul, and that shines its light on the path of others. So we become conduits mm -hmm. of this heavenly peace. You know, remember the Lord is the Lord of Shalom. That's right. And so, that is an antidote for strangers and friends alike. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in this 
like you mentioned, COVID, this is a global event that we're all mm -hmm. traveling down together. We don't know mm -hmm. if it's going to turn into World War Three and go nuclear or not, but I haven't experienced mm -hmm. anything like this since the Cuban Missile Crisis when I was just a boy. Mm -hmm. And it was on everybody's hearts and thoughts then. But the God is saying at this time, he's saying, be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious. Don't be fearful because that's the God we love. He doesn't want us to be afraid. He says these things, you know, you, these things will come. You will see these things. When you see them, you know the time is near. The Lord is coming back and he wants us to be, um, have hope in our hearts that he's coming back to, to rescue us. He's not going to abandon us. He's He's got a plan. It's, he has a perfect plan. And part of that, until till this it completely plays itself out we have a, a position we can take that is of peace that is of joy that is of love that it's 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 precious and and we can draw close to god he says if you draw close to me i will draw close to you and so we want to come in we want to come into his courts we want to come into the holy of holies the the inner bridal chamber of his love that in that secret place of his love, we can abide in his faithfulness. His love is all-powerful. He's creator of every living thing. He created the universe. He created people in his image. He created every beautiful living um, trees and flowers and animals. Everything we see is, is God's creation. And he has a perfect order and a plan and a design. And and he wants us to draw near. It's it's not out of duty. It's not a religious duty. It's just a place to come to know true love, true acceptance, true peace. It's 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 an intimate love relationship. God is not just a religious idea or a thought or a concept. He's a living, creative beautiful living God he's alive and he wants to live in us and and express himself through us and 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 restore whatever has happened in your life for harm and hurt he wants to restore those years and give you newness of life and renew you and transform you more and more into his image and he's very gentle about that as we feel led as we need more as we hunger for more, we reach a place where, God, I need more. This is, I'm not satisfied with my life or where things are at. I'm, uh, you know, maybe there's a lot of people leaning into drugs and alcohol and all kinds of things. And these things aren't satisfying. It's not the way. It's not the true way. It's a counterfeit. It's maybe it, it satisfies for a time, but it's all in all, it's not the true um, solution. It's not the true comfort. And Ultimately, God wants, not only does he want to live in us, but he's given us the Holy Spirit to live in us, that he's our comforter. And he will teach us all things. And we will learn and grow on this journey. And it's a journey of intimacy. It, it never, it never, there's always more. There's, there's so many layers. You never, it never runs out. The love of God never runs out. It is forever. It's eternal. And we are actually eternal beings. And, and though we pass through this life and we, we, we may die and most of us will die and we leave this world, we, we step through into eternal life. It's a, right? There's a, there's a new life that's forever. Right. This is a good moment to segue into the Song of Solomon. Yes. Which is a tremendous story about the Shulamite uh, bride looking for her bridegroom and, uh, highly recommend the Passion Translation, which is what we'll be reading from today yeah. to you. It's a very inspired mm -hmm. translation. And uh, yes, go ahead, Suzanne. Sure. And um, so we're just skipping into it. We're just, we've just pulled out a few um, passages we thought were relevant for this moment, but the whole of it is absolutely beautiful. We encourage you at some point to read it. Um, so in chapter eight, it says, um, and it's sort of like where my heart is actually right now, um, and I just relate to this. It says, if only I could show everyone this passionate desire I have for you. If only I could express it fully, no matter who was watching me, without shame or embarrassment, 
I long to bring you to my innermost chamber, this holy sanctuary you have formed within me. Oh, that I might carry you within me. And that's the secret place. It's so precious. It's so personal. It's so wonderful. It's incredible. And it's, it's a spiritual thing, but it's real. And I want to, you know, I want everyone to know, I want to share this, this beautiful love, this incredible, no matter what I've lived through, God's love has just completely blanketed and covered all the sorrows. He's, 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 he's bound up my heart in his love. Like I'm, I've been set free from everything that tried to harm me and I've learned to forgive and things like that. So it's so precious. Um, we do our best to just put our best foot forward. It's, I think the ultimate thing about this place of abiding is that if we just kept it for ourselves, oh, this is so precious for me, it, it, it wouldn't give justice to everything Jesus gave. He gave everything, his whole life. We would, we would fill up like a pond versus being a stream of living water, which is what we want to be. We mm -hmm. want to be a conduit. Mm -hmm. having the Holy Spirit just rushing through us yeah, so we can bring nourishment to the rest of this planet. Mm -hmm. and, and the more we share this living water, this truth, the more we share it, the greater our hearts are swelling with love and joy because it love abounds. Love abounds. It grows. It, it, it edifies. It beautifies. It, it just... It gives life. It's called the abundant life. And it's more precious when we give it away. Um, so there's something very special. I mean, Jesus said, give and you shall receive. It's out of a cheerful heart. It's out of, you know, giving is to give from your heart is such a blessing. Yes, it's transformative. We, we've even talked about it like a heart transplant. We're getting, giving the old lamp of our heart to the Lord and he's giving us a new heart back that we can hear him better, feel him better, and also be able to dispense to others yeah. what we've been given. Yes. It's very gratifying. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so um, I just want to conclude with this other scripture here that in part of this sharing is, it says in chapter 7, how beautiful on the mountains are the sandaled feet of this one bringing such good news. You are truly royalty. The way you walk so gracefully in my ways displays such dignity. You, have tr you are truly the poetry of God, his very handiwork. Out of your innermost being is flowing the fullness of my spirit, never failing to satisfy. Within your womb, there is a birthing of harvest wheat. They are the sons and daughters, nurtured by the purity you impart. How gracious you have become. Your life stands tall as a tower, like a shining light on a hill. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. We want to conclude with a, a prayer that's an invitational prayer for you to renew, for you to grow, or for you to find this light that we're talking about, that we're directing you to, it starts by asking Jesus to heal you and to set you free, to ask him to bind up your brokenness. It comes from rejecting him. We affirm that we will forgive as we are forgiven. And we'll let this process of renewal begin to take root and have this tree of life stand tall in the garden of our heart. And we just encourage you to, in your own way, in your own words, call out to Jesus and he will answer in a unique and very personal way. He wants you to be part of this, this family, this royal kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I just want to impress on you, you know, 
today is the day of salvation. You don't have to be in a church. And it's better if, in fact, if you make this personal appeal on your own in, in your quiet place and begin this new life that he has dreamt up for you that he's hoping that you will embrace and become an active part mm -hmm. of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for tuning in. Thank you for liking and subscribing and following us. Mm -hmm. and stay tuned for our, our next um, uh, portion of our series where we'll all be working on a new canvas. And um, it's, it's going to be looking at the, the parable of the ten virgins from a different perspective. Um, so we, we, we hope you've enjoyed uh, how we've unpacked the interior life and how that personal place of abiding in God's love is meant to be shared. And, and, and we just want to keep bringing you more and more uh, messages of God's goodness and faithfulness so that your life can be edit edified and full of love and hope. And that's our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're interested in seeing more of what we've done in the past, you can, you're welcome to visit our websites. They'll be posted in the description here on this YouTube channel. Yeah. Thank you and God bless you.